Hey, 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 everybody. Michelle is here. Just want to let you know I made it to my my little um, adventure spot. It's December the 10th, 2023 on a Sunday. So, yeah, I wanted to take a trip to see uh, what's going on in the world. And what I'm picking up as far as uh, the energy. And, um, you know, just, just expecting the environment around me. How about that? And I, and I suggest everyone do this, you know, not to go on a vacation per se, you know, just kind of change the wording, you know, uh, make it an adventure and make it uh, something that you are, you know, inspecting your environment, you know, especially if you are going to live in these environments and you choose to live in these type of, you know, live in these type of environments. And what do I mean? Well, some people like to be in a major cities and some people like to be in rural, rural areas. And um, I must admit, when I went into the rural area, I mean, that was a perfect place for me to heal myself and, and recover myself from my toxic environment. I really, really loved working out in a garden and working in my yard, more in my own lawn. That gave me so much joy. But I felt like I was, there were some things that had, things started to happening. And I'll go into that at a later date. Um, but um, it was like I was a sitting duck. All of us are sitting ducks, by the way, and I'll explain that another time. But yeah, I felt like a sitting duck, and also uh, I told you there's no there's no advantage to owning a house or renting a house. No matter what anyone tells you, you need to look at your finances. You need to look at your situation and ask yourself, okay, what do I want versus what everybody else has. You know, I'm not attempting to keep up with the Joneses or keep up with the Scotts or keep up with the Williams. You know, what do I want? And so um, having that garden was uh, a fantastic way to recover. If you want to heal yourself, get out in nature. Get your hands dirty, so to speak. You know, do gardening. You know, touch the trees, touch the flowers. Get back in touch. Reconnect to your reality. Ground yourself in your reality by doing that uh, what, what I call it walking meditation, but others call it other things where you are totally in tune with your environment from your feet all the way to the top of your your head. Right up there. So it's I, I think that will uh, open you up to many, many possibilities when you get back in nature and reconnect with nature. Look around at the animals. Look at what the animals are doing without interfering with them. Stop feeding animals. We're poisoning them. Stop it. You think our food is, you know, you think our food is unhealthy, but yet you want to feed it to the animals? Stop it. Leave it alone. Just watch them. See if you can learn something from these animals before we before we lose all of them. We've lost a large mass of them. But, you know, like when I was driving up here on the, uh, 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 further west coast here um, I did not see roadkill now listen to what I'm saying here it's, it's, it is just as degenerate to see roadkill as it is to not see it think about what I'm saying if you see roadkill that means what that there are some animals in the area if you don't that means what there are no animals but I'm not saying that it's necessarily um, beneficial or positive to see roadkill, but that, that would have alerted us that animals are in the area. And guess what? I guess we, because of our massiveness of, our massive overpopulation, our massive interference with the mountains and drilling and doing this and that and the other, the animals are no longer there. I saw no animals all the way from, from, um, from where I where I am to where I am now, so so just think about things in a little bit more open openness if you choose to, and not make it personal. I'm gonna keep saying that because everybody gets all personal and get all emotional and attached, especially when you start talking about animals. My goodness, that sends people into some type of uh, it's like a trance. They go into a trance and it's unnatural. It's an unnatural trance about animals, especially when people used to stop 
on the middle in the middle of major highways just to save an animal that usually is already dead. And then guess what? Nobody's paying attention to you that you stopped to help an animal that's already dead. And then they come up and hit you and you either, either are seriously bodily, you know, you receive serious bodily injury or you are dead. I've had many of those kind of things, you know, coming out of a law enforcement background, hearing that people stopping on the side of the road to help an injured animal and end up getting killed with the animal. So that's significant to to drive as far as I'm, I've driven from the West to another state on the West Coast. <laughs> and uh, reckon, and and then not see that one road kill. That's very unusual. Pay attention, everybody, please. Pay attention to your environment. That's why I do this kind of stuff. I drive around because I want to give my thoughts something to contemplate, cultivate, by introducing other visual things into my into my my sphere, you know, in my sphere here, you know. So it was a smooth ride. Of course, it was traffic. Of course, right? And of course, I got lost. Of course. But when I got into this city, this city is no different than any, well, this state so far than what I've seen. I'm in a particular city right now, and I don't really want to say because I don't want to, you know, I just want people, I want, I don't want you to take my word for anything. I want you to figure it out on your own. You know, I can, I find more benefit in driving or if I had somebody with me or having them drive, vice versa. Because I can actually see it and if I want to get out, I can expect it and look around and this and that and the other. You can't do that on the train or you definitely can't do it in an airplane. I think when you're in an airplane, you get a, a mixed, uh, you get a um, deception of the actual realities. It may look beautiful from the sky looking down, but when you get into the details, okay, you see, you see some of the devastation or the uh, neglect or the, uh, you know, the environmental causes, you know, to some of the uh, vegetation and such. So, but yes, I, I'm here. I'm going to be here for a couple of days just to look around um, and get some, like I said, give my consciousness something more to cultivate you know, bring in more because you, you get you get knowledge from the outside. You bring it into your innermost being. You contemplate, cultivate, and you use all your sensing to discern it and to recognize it. And, and the best thing to do is have it become an experience for you instead of just knowledge being pound, pounding your brain. Because eventually, just you know, because a lot of us have knowledge memories. We don't have necessary knowledge. We have knowledge memories. In other words, a lot of people can regurgitate things, but they have no idea what it means. None whatsoever. And so, uh, yeah. So so far so good. I uh, was I was I was craving uh, some sh some sushi, and I uh, was attempting to order some sushi from a place that was recommended to me, and of course I could not. And I figured that would be. I, I'm thinking people are out on Sunday, and and those in that in that particular vi environment preparing sushi, that is it. That is a connection right there, you know. And so, and chances are this place is filled up with people because I couldn't get online, I couldn't call in, I tried to do the apps. So I just, but it's always great to have backup. I have some backup. I got myself filled up. I feel good, like I know I should. You know, I you know, I mean, eating and and trying foods are such a highlight for me and I enjoy that I just hope I don't you know so you know the last time I had sushi I, I was it, it didn't agree with me but that's fine I didn't stop eating sushi so I just had some it was delicious and so we'll see how I feel in the morning <laughs> oh gosh and when I was out I was out walking around a little bit in the area where I am just to see what's going on and you know of course people are out everybody's walking around okay so I, I decided, uh, and it's a little cool out there, So, but I, I was prepared. I'm prepared for this kind of weather. Okay, I just heard something. But um, so, yeah, so far, so good. Everything is working out uh, as I, um, I, I, this is, you know, let me just say some things. You know, let me make, let me say some things that I have been wanting to say um, about prophecies and predictions. Let me just go ahead and say it. I was going to save it for later, but let me go ahead and say this. Okay, so for 
millennia, all the way back to, you know, from millions of years ago, Henoch, we know, we know, we know of uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, you know, all of these prophets from, from thousands upon thousands of years back, in some cases, possibly millions, we have been given prophecies from these so-called messengers or these so-called prophets, so-called, uh, gosh, I mean, all these, all these names we've given those that are Nakadamian, right? Or is it? They, well, yeah, Nakadamian is one, and they and the other one, I can't remember. Where people are kind of uh, giving you prophecies about what can happen and what cannot happen, okay? And also at the same time, some some scientists came through back in the day, you know, maybe decades ago, uh, maybe millions of years ago, came through and were alerting us, alerting the populations in a form of what we may call prophecies. The philosophers were doing that. Um, So-called, um, you know, like I said, the scientific minds, uh, psychiatry, philosophers, um, were giving us uh, so-called prophecies and warning us, you know, which are warnings, saying that if you don't do this, this could happen. If you don't do this, this could happen. If you don't make these kind of course course corrections, this can happen. A lot of people have been coming through for millions and millions of years, warning us about what can happen to us if we don't take action to correct something. Because that's, like I said, that's what a prophecy is, is a warning saying, if you don't change, blah, 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 this is what can happen. This is what can happen. And so over the course of that, over the course of time, of course, we forgot, we, we disregarded it, obviously, right? Because this is, we are now in the results of, of our neglect and our complacency. Now, what I wanted to say about, and then now, like I said, we're in a culmination right now, you know, virtuing towards the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which may be eventful or maybe not. Okay. I told you in 2022, there was something significant that happened and no one, to my knowledge, has acknowledged it because it was, you know, we, sometimes we have things right before our eyes and we cannot see it. We, I mean, that's just the way it is. And so we have to advance our eyes, our, our smells, our, our taste, our hearing, our sensing and receiving. All that has to be elevated as well over the course of time. So I know a lot of people get all worked up because, you know, everybody wants to know when something's supposed to happen. When is the earthquake going to happen? When is this supposed to happen? You know, a lot of people, like I said, were so upset and they were because, you know, they kept pro proclaiming end of days, end of days, end of days. And and then those end of days would show up, these so-called end of day, end of day dates, and nothing would happen. And some people, and then a lot of people, of course, made excuses about it. You know what I mean? So as it has as it has been taught to me, we failed in regard to uh, recognizing what the prophecies were warning us about. We kept pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off, denying that it, that there was an issue, denying it. So that's where uh, conspiracy spirit, conspiracy theories ran amok. Just, just, just roar through our, our environment. Roar, you know, just, just, you know, came through. The conspiracy theories uh, allow people to be delusional. It allow people to be uh, hallucinating, and they they consider that free speech. You know, they figure that they can they can spout off all this nonsense and consider it free speech. Okay, you can consider it free speech if you choose to. I'm not going to be uh, necessarily caught up in that because I have, as they say, bigger fish to fry. But all I'm saying is that, you know, just like anything else, if you don't do, if you don't follow the warnings or pay attention to the warnings, guess what? So, I bring this up to say that now everybody's going to say, well, what's the predictions? You know, they want to know predictions. When is the earthquake in, uh, on the West Coast is supposed to happen? 
When is the volcanoes are supposed to erupt? When is this supposed to happen? When is that is supposed to happen? Well, if we understand and we're thinking reasonably, a prediction means something's going to happen. Now, when it's going to happen and where it's going to happen, that's normally not anything to know because, again, the damage has been done. And what will happen is people already will react illogically and be and more crazed than, than we are and then go into attempting to uh, overcorrect a situation even even more so than we than we do do now because we're so we're so extreme we're so fanatical and so radical that any uh, attempts of us you know and with, with the when we interfere so much we interfere 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 we've caused so much damage due to our interference if we had just paid attention to the warnings and responded to the warnings again we are in the effects of it we're in the consequences the damage has been done it's not a thing to be done to avoid the 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 warnings the catastrophes more so in a um, environmental factor meaning relating to the the climate destruction and relating to mother nature okay the ball the the the, the ball it started out as a cr piece of crumb and it kept rolling and rolling and rolling down the hill it is now so massive that all the best equipment in the world that we claim we have will not be able to stop it, okay? So a lot of people are going to say, oh, give me some proof of that. Give me some proof. I need evidence. I need evidence. I want to see it myself. Like some people claiming like they're so, they're so deserving of having everything proven to them over and over and over again. And it, and it still doesn't matter. That's not enough evidence. It's this and that and the other. Well, you know, and like some people say, well, I want to see a UFO. And and what? And then what? You see it and then what? You know, that's that's the point I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to make. It's irrelevant whether you accept the, the realities of our situation or not. Okay, I'm just telling you the damage is done. Now, I am not one to be running around um, causing people to panic. You know that's 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 unnecessary, really, when you consider um, everything else that could happen versus what will happen. I mean, panicking can make things worse, and so if people did know exactly exactly when something was going to happen, guess what? There's going to be manipulation. There's going to be interference. There's going to be this or that, or the other. It's done. It's in writing. Okay, the predictions are coming. Now, what is that? Does that mean you need to panic? I say, no, you don't need to panic. All I'm saying is you need to be aware of your surroundings. Know what's going on in your backyard and the surrounding areas where you live. Don't make everything a vacation. You know, make it an adventure or an inspection. You know, like these favorite places you like to go. A lot of people like to go to Yellowstone. All right, when you were out at Yellowstone, did you notice anything unusual there? Did you notice anything unusual at any of these other parks that you go to, these, these so-called entertainment venues? Have you noticed anything different? Okay, are you paying attention to the disappearing mountains? Are you paying attention to that? Are you paying attention to the splitting of the roadways? Okay, are you paying attention to the, the crowds everywhere? There's crowds everywhere in every city. Okay, so when I came into this city today, I see no different with this city than any other cities I lived in. So I would suggest everyone to pay attention to your own backyard, okay, places where you reside, instead of trying to point this finger to everybody else and blaming this politician, blaming this community, blaming this, and you know, just, just all this. Because I've determined after coming through here again and checking out what's going on, it's all political. This is all, this is nothing but smoke and mirrors, and entertainment to point fingers at one city, pinning them against each other. In other words, having them going back and forth, back and forth against each other. It's all political theater, okay? Um, people are looking, looking to, to, uh, to, like I said before in a, a video, they, they want to draw the line and have one group against the other. 
you know, Democrat versus Republican and independent, men versus women, black versus white, Latino versus Asians, you know, the, the rich from the poor. Let's throw in some homelessness, you know, and, and, and let's do, and even with the working outs of the homelessness, you know, again, like in California, uh, there's always this pointing, okay, California is homelessness, California is homelessness. Okay, yeah, California has an issue with homelessness, but they've had an issue with homelessness since the 1930s. Okay, it's massive, massive overpopulation. That's what it is. It's not the homeless, per se, is that we're all massively, massively overpopulated with people, our toys, our equipment, drilling inside the uh, interior core of the planet, you know, disturbing that that uh, biodiversity, disturbing possibly civilized civilizations that may be living in the core of our planet. As I put a post out earlier, if we can build and live inside uh, the interior of Orla uh, Atlanta, have underground Atlanta, you don't think that there's underground civilizations that exist as well? Think about it and be logical, reasonable, and rational for once in your life, for your sake of your consciousness. Okay, going around with your head in the sand and listening to all this garbage, it's only hurting you, the individual, and you're developing and you're evolving of your consciousness. This, you know, to be staying in delusion about stuff and staying in uh, hallucination, saying, okay, I got to see it. I got to see it before I believe it. But, you know, and then when you see it, then no, no, that's that's still not enough. It's still not enough. So my point is this. As I'm building, building and developing myself in my ventures, you know, whether it's this or that or the other, um, I, I don't have a problem answering questions for, for answering questions. But I want you to understand how to answer your own questions by using what's innermost in you, you can do exactly as I do and become highly sensor, highly sensory. And that means absolutely nothing. All it means is that you are aware of your environment. You know, you know what's going on in your own backyard. You know how to use all of your sensing to pay attention to what you hear, what you see, what you sense and receive, which is called being a human being. At the end of the day, that's what a human being does. A human being does not sit around and believe nothing. They don't sit around and wait for somebody to come and save them, meaning from a celestial point of view, like some form of energy is supposed to be, fall out of the sky and come out and help them. That's, that's illogical. The only person that's going to help a human being is another human being, and more so you, the human being, even though we're badly out of control of a of the good nature of a human being, meaning we're becoming more degenerate, deviant, dangerous to women. And men are becoming so dangerous to women and children because of the degeneracy and the de deviancy. And of course, a man is not going to say that and admit it. I mean, you know, and so, but they want to point the finger at women and, and target women. Yes, women have their faults as well. We all do. But the degeneracy and the deviancy is coming from the male, the biological male. That's where it's coming from. That behavior is coming from that. So we just have to find a way to kindly and gently delve into that innermost being of that type of behavior and actions. And it's very dangerous to do so. I'm just going to make that very clear. It's very dangerous because some of them have have gone so far so far over the edge of deviancy and degeneracy they are uh possibly will cause more harm than good if you attempt to reach them without being kind and gentle to them and not pointing fingers at them and, and calling them evil you know making them feel even worse about you know because chances are they're hurting inside Chances are they feel worthless inside because why would they want to, 
And, and chances are they've been thinking about self-harm since puberty. Okay? They have been thinking about self-harm since puberty. Okay? I bet you if you sat down and been and kind and gentle with some of these people that have this type of behavior and ask them, they'll tell you that. Chances are some of them will, will like that as toddlers wanting to harm themselves, self-harm. And then once they became older enough to start thinking clearly and effectively, or not so clearly and effectively, but thinking per se, you know, they were thinking about harming themselves even then. So this trip is about just confirmation. And it, it, I mean, I, I see no changes per se, meaning that, um, you know, I don't see any issues in this particular city I am than I've had seen in the cities I've come through or lived in. There's no difference. Uh, I just want to make sure I stay grounded in my reality, do whatever I can to stay relevant to what's happening now and work on being conscious now. Stay conscious. Stay in a conscious form of meditation is what I call it. You know, you're meditating on every on everything you're doing. Every activity is a meditation. That's where I am, you know. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, you know, drink me something here. I got something to drink here. It tastes really good. Um, and then do some do some little, some, some, uh, some stuff, whatever, and then see how my evening goes. You know, since it gets dark so, so soon around here, you know, God, it makes me want to, but no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> just having fun. But I just want to let you know, give you an update of what I'm doing, how it's going, and I'll talk more about it later. But, uh, you know, make give yourself um, some room to, you know, to really um, trust yourself, number one, and build yourself and and vow. Just just make it make a promise to yourself that you're going to do everything in your power to ground yourself in your reality and be held accountable for your thoughts the best way you know how. I'm going to help you just like everyone else out there is attempting to help so that we can, um, you know, we can uh, allow people to, you know, to take the path that is meant for them. Okay. Again, the energy of your thoughts are going to put you where you need to be. But if you worked on yourself properly, you will be where you want to be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. Trust me, I'll be back.